up, what's up, Abuna, wherever you're joining us from. What a joy it is to come to you right where you are. We'll continue with our Simon series, Unlikely Heroes. And today, guess what? Pastor James! <laughs> Pastor James is coming in loaded and reloaded. So you better get ready to hear, to hear what God has to say. But even before we get to that, let's enjoy and join in together in the presence of God through song and dance. Join in and let's worship the Lord. Come on, let's go. Come on. Put your hands together like this. Come on. Hey. This song says, Lord, wherever you send us, we will go. Place my life in your hands With a loving father I won't fail now Igniting me a passion oh, To set the world ablaze Come on, help me sing and sing Whoa. Through the fire, through the storm Testimony, come on, sing it again. Yeah. Amazing God on my side. <laughs> hey. What a revelation I won't hide. Here I am, use me. Oh, yeah, I will come without delay.
Lord, that's our declaration. That where you send us, we shall go. And Lord, it's easy to say it, but it's even harder to do it. But you promise that you will never leave us nor forsake us. And Lord, just like you did with your disciples, you sent them to the ends of the world to spread the good news. We declare that we are ready. Send us and we shall go. Lord, we declare that we give our lives away to you. Everything we ever knew, Jehovah, Lord, we surrender it to you. May you take it and make it yours. Take our minds, our hearts, our bodies, our houses, everything we have, Jehovah. We need you to take control. Because when you're in control, nothing goes out of, out of control. So be magnified even as we worship you, King of Kings. Thank you, Jesus. We give you all the glory, Jesus. Come on, wherever you are, just begin to worship the Lord. Begin to surrender your life to Him. Begin to say, Lord, which way do you want me to go? Oh, Lord. We need you, Jesus. We need you, Lord. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we need you, Jesus. Yeah. I give myself away. I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away, yeah. Oh Lord, I give myself away so you can use me. So here I
help me sing it. Drop me, help me sing it. Lift your voice here. My life is not my own. To you I belong. I give myself, I give myself to you. Sing it together, come on. Yeah, yeah. My life is not my own. To you I belong. I give myself, I give myself. that to you as individuals we give ourselves away to you as a church we give ourselves away to you as a nation we give ourselves to you as a as a continent of Africa we give ourselves to you as a universe Lord come and take control Lord this very moment you're sending us to go and Lord wherever you send us we will go whether it's to our neighbors, our friends, even to our families, our siblings need you. May you use us to be the bridge that connects them to you. Come and take your place, Lord. In Jesus' name, we have worshipped and everybody say, Amen, amen and amen, amen and Amen. Well, don't go anywhere. We still have so much lined up for you. So stay tuned. In fact, this is a good moment. Send someone that text message and tell them, hey, church is lit. <laughs> See you on the other side. God bless you. Hi everyone, my name is Angela Kimara. I'm the executive pastor in charge of discipleship. And I'm just wanting to give us some updates about what's going on in the movement. Um, and there are three things I'm excited about. The first is the Fearless Summit. You guys, that thing was exciting. We had the most exciting three days of God speaking to us as we discussed moving from passion to movement. First, I wanna appreciate every one of you 
people attended at the summit. It would not have been a success without you. I want to appreciate all the businessmen who came as sponsors or came as vendors. Without you, it would not have been a success. So what's been happening is people have been writing in and saying, hey, how do I get in touch with the, with the content? How do I find out what happened? I want to see what happened because everyone is exciting. Well, I'm excited to tell you that the content is available for you. All you have to do is visit the uh, Mavuno YouTube, the Fearless YouTube page. Um, and every week, I think from last week, we've been debuting music and some of the plenary sessions that happened um, at the summit. So if you want to find out more information, please visit our, our, that page, subscribe to it, and make sure you hit the notifications so that you find out when something is being debuted. The second thing I want to talk about is Family Sunday. So we're going through an amazing series called titled Unlikely Heroes. We've been studying the book of uh, Jonah with Pastor M and it's just been an amazing series. Well, at the beginning of the series, Pastor M challenged us to write five names of people that were praying for to come to Christ at the beginning of the series. Well, next Sunday, it's an amazing opportunity for you to invite those people to watch the service with you or to come uh, to church with you uh, next weekend. And so what we want to invite you to do is we're going to share with you a little post, a little flyer that you can share with your friends and your family and invite them for that service. It's going to be an amazing time where God is going to minister to us. We're going to experience miracles and salvations. I cannot wait to see what God will do. The third thing I'm so thrilled about is the Free the Future campaign. Well, guys, this is the most exciting thing that's happened at the beginning of the year. Well, last year, Pastor M gave us a, a word that we'll be debt free um, in September this year. And so God led us to begin to learn about giving fast fruits, a, a biblical discipline. And so we challenged everyone who considers themselves to be a Mavunite or calls Mavuno their home to engage with us by faith, by pledging to give a fast fruit offering. And what happened is a lot of you have engaged with us. I'm so excited to share that up to date, we have collected about, because um, we wanted to give one, 150 million, we have collected about, or we have in pledges, 76 point nine million pledged up to date we have collected about 31.8 million isn't god amazing as people have put their faith into action god has showed up what i want to tell you guys is next week your campus pastor will give you a little bit more details if you want to find out more about how your campus is engaging they'll give you some specific numbers but i wanted to find out has god been faithful to you as you've been journeying with us in learning about giving our first food offerings has god been doing something amazing in your life. I want to invite you to come and share with us your stories, your testimonies. I want you to write to us at info at mavunochurch.org and share your stories with us or talk to your campus pastor and let's by faith celebrate what God is doing in our campus and in our movement. Well, Mavuno Church, I want to speak a blessing upon you as we prepare to hear the word of God. I want to pray for you that may God be with you, may God be with your families and may the Lord bless you as you listen to the word of God. God bless you. Ah, wait, wait. Cheza gimpo wa bana. Kuna gimba ya hapa, bro. Uko chini. Wait, ache. Wait, cheza gimpo wa bro. Tik, tik, tik. Ona? Na gimi meisha hivo, bro. Ah, 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 ah. Ah, ah. Five nil. Aunanga strategy, bro. Na kuambia. Ata nilichagua timba ya bana. You know, speaking of teams, bro. You know, I've just been thinking about the people I hang around. You know? Hmm. I feel like you around the wrong people. You know, like what I only play kangi mal in life. I've been thinking maybe I need to change my friends. Bro, I know how we solve this. We start a cult. Excuse me, we go to the forest to Tafteka Shamba. We start our own community. I even have t-shirts and slogans picked out. Wow. You even have t-shirts and slogans picked out. You've really outdone yourself today, Confidence. Do I need to remind you that we have serious social anxiety? Hmm? Okay, but, but seriously though, let's think about this, man. When was the last time you spoke publicly in front of people? Do I need to, conv to remind you that you can't convince anyone to do anything? No, you're overcomplicating things, okay? Why don't, why don't we just try inviting him to church? What if he doesn't like, you're boring? Because you see there, he'll find a good community that probably will help him grow, you know? And then, no pressure. Just tell him to take it one step at a time and then see what happens. Bro, how about I invite you to church? You know, cause you see there, you'll find like a community, you know? 
maybe you'll have the potential to grow, you know, make new friends, you know. And no pressure, by the way, you know, just take it one day at a time, come this Sunday and then see what happens. That doesn't sound like a bad idea. I'll try it. Much, much, much later. <laughs> hey, bro. What, what's with this new energy? Why biako may change, bro? Well, I'll, I'll tell you what it is. You know, ever since, you know, ever since Nianze Kuenda Church, I don't know, like, I just feel like, you know, I, I feel like I'm around good people, you know, feel like my, my life is going positive, you know. Thanks for the invite, bro. For real? Wow. You're a real friend. You're a hero, man. A hero, me? No, unlikely. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you're worshipping with us from, whatever time zone you're in. I uh, was so glad um, that you're able to join us. Welcome to church today. I'm Pastor James Moshai. I'm the lead pastor at Mavuno Church, Hill City Campus, and I have the privilege of bringing to us God's word. Our senior pastor, Pastor Moridhi Wanjao, started us off on our sermon series for this month called Unlikely Heroes. And we're looking at the unlikely types of people uh, that God calls to do extraordinary things, that sometimes when God has something extraordinary he wants done, he reaches out for someone uh, who's not exactly like Likely. And, you know, through the life of the reluctant prophet Jonah, we've learned a couple of lessons uh, that, uh, that every one of us is created for one huge purpose. And, you know, some of you will remember this if you've been following with us, uh, that that one purpose is to know God and to make him known. We've seen that every step away from God's purpose is a step down. We also learned that God specializes uh, in using the least likely people uh, to do his work. This was last Sunday, that God doesn't choose the qualified Instead, he qualifies the chosen. Now, there's an exercise that Pastor M had us do on the first Sunday. For those of you who were there, you've done this. Uh, and I want you to do it again. For some of you, maybe you didn't see that service. Uh, and so here's what I want you to do. I want you to get a piece of paper and I want you to write on it five names, the names of five people in your life who you know are far from God and don't go to church. Let me say that again. I want you to write a list of five people uh, uh, you know, in your life who you know are far from God and they don't go to church. And I want you to hang on to that list and we'll sort of get to it, to it uh, a little bit later on. I want to start us off with a question. How many of you have ever experienced a miracle? Have you ever experienced a bona fide experience that you know this was beyond the natural? I want to talk a little bit about that today. The whole idea of a miracle is that it's not caused by human power. It's not explainable by science. It transcends our normal life experiences. It is beyond us. It may be something that we desire. It could be something that we desperately need, but it is not something uh, that we can control. But here's the thing. What if I told you that there is a way you can act actually provoke God's miracles over your life, that you can live a life, uh, that, uh, a miraculous life and experience miracles frequently. Would you be interested? My suspicion is that many of us would be because there are many times when we desperately need God to intervene in our lives. What if I told you that it is possible to live in, in, in that space of living out and experiencing the miraculous regularly and frequently? I want us to read today from the book of Jonah chapter 3 uh, as we learn, uh, as we seek out the lessons we learned this week from our unlikely hero, hero, the prophet Jonah. Here's what it says. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Go to, that, go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim to it the message I give you. Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord and went to Nineveh. Now Nineveh was a very large city. It took three days to go through it. Jonah began by going a day's journey into the city, proclaiming 40 more days and Nineveh will be overthrown. The Ninevites believed God, uh, 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 the Ninevites believed God, verse 5. A fast was proclaimed and all of them, from the greatest to the least, put on sackcloth. You know, we concluded last week with Jonah being spat out, uh, you know, by the fish that had swallowed him. He had been in the belly of this big fish for three days and three nights. And God gives him the instruction that he had run away from the first time. And he says, go to Nineveh. And this time Jonah obeys quickly and he covers the distance. He travels uh, all the way to Nineveh and he proclaims the message that God has given him to proclaim. And his message was extremely simple. I don't know if you caught it. It was simple. Simply this, 40 days from now, Nineveh will be destroyed. 
the interesting thing about this message it's, is that it's very light on the details. He doesn't say who will overthrow Nineveh. That was the instruction that, that Jonah had given. That was the message he had delivered. He doesn't say how. He didn't say whether, you know, the 40 days were given for them as an opportunity for them to change their ways. He doesn't say whether the deal, you know, was already sealed and they would be, you know, destroyed in spite of their response. All he does is say the words that God said, uh, told him to say. 40 days and Nineveh will be overthrown. But what happened next is completely unexplainable. And you need to understand, let me give a little context here. Jonah was from Israel, and Israel was a tiny and weak nation compared with Assyria, or the capital city of which was Nineveh. And, and, and you know, Assyria, on the other hand, was the most powerful and most sophisticated country in the world at the time. By any human measure, Jonah was not qualified to speak there. He was not qualified to address these people. These people should have laughed at his strange accent. They should have dismissed his ignorance as someone from the village, uh, as someone from some insignificant corner of the world. They should have become angry at him for preaching about their downfall, for declaring that a nation, a city as great as theirs was going to be destroyed. That should have been the response. He should have looked like a village kid who has nothing to tell these city people. But as Jonah went into that city and preached exactly as God had directed him, the strangest thing happened. The whole city turned to God. It's like they were ready for his message. They not only believed what he was saying, but they decided to call a fast for the entire city. No one was exempted. Verse 6 of Jonah chapter 3 continues. When Jonah's warning reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne took off his royal robes, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat down in the dust. This proclamation he issued in Nineveh. By the decree of the king and his nobles, do not let people or animals, herds or flocks, taste anything. Do not let them eat or drink. Verse 8 continues, but let people and animals be covered with sackcloth. Let everyone call urgently on God. Let them give up their evil ways and their violence. Who knows, the king says in verse 9, God may yet relent and with compassion turn from his fierce anger so that we will not perish. The king is calling upon the people of Nineveh to turn away from things he clearly knows is happening. He says, turn away from your sin and from your violence. This is the only time we hear of a fast where even the animals are forced to participate, that even the animals were not allowed to taste anything. But it's like the king was saying, everything that we are and everything that we have has been tainted with sin and rebellion. He's saying that everything has to be realigned to God's ways. I'm sure that even Jonah was shocked to realize that as a result of his obedience, a whole nation would be saved from destruction and restored back to God. Now, clearly, it was not Jonah's eloquence or charisma that convinced the people or their king. His declaration was a simple statement, and it was a statement of judgment and condemnation. All he said to them was, 40 days and Nineveh will be destroyed. But somehow, that simple message, that message that was devoid of eloquence and depth, as we, you know, as we probably would call it today, causes the entire city all the way from the king to turn away and to humble themselves before the Lord. And I put it to you that this was a miracle, that there was something supernatural at work here, that something not explainable by natural causes alone was happening in the city of Nineveh, something only God could do. It appears to me that God had gone before Jonah and somehow, I don't know how, I may not be able to explain it, but somehow he had prepared the hearts of a whole city. He had made them ready for the simple message of judgment and destruction so that all that Jonah had to do was say the words God gave him. 
Simple words, not eloquent, no explanations. But all he needed to do was say the words that God gave him and God did the rest. I believe that there's a powerful lesson uh, uh, for us in this passage. It's, the, it's, it's one that sort of really just jumps out when you consider the simplicity of the message and the fruitfulness of the message. What I realize is this, that if you want to experience the miraculous, if you want to live a life that is supernaturally empowered, if you want miracles to become a regular part of your life, then you need to join God in what he's doing. That's the way that you begin to experience the miracle. Look for something that God is passionate about. Look for something that God is involved in and join him in it. And then do your part and let God do his. Look for something that God is doing. Align to it. Enter into it. Then do your part and let God do his. You know, we live in a culture where Christians are fast losing their confidence in the truth of God's word. We are bombarded by ideologies from everywhere, ideologies from Netflix and YouTube, ideologies from all different kinds of social media. The average young Christian in Kenya believes that it really doesn't matter what you believe as long as you're sincere in your beliefs. The impact of this thinking is that the gospel message has been relegated uh, into just one of many options. As a result, most Christians today have very weak convictions when it comes to sharing their faith. We have diminished or ignored or sidelined the very powerful claims of the gospel message. For example, what do we do with the fact that Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, no one comes to the Father except through me. That's John chapter 14 and verse 6. What do we do with this verse? What do we do with this unequivocal statement by Jesus as he was teaching? Because the world teaches us that all roads lead to God. But Jesus says, not so. There is only one road. And, 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 and that road is me. I am the only path to reaching to the Father. What do we do with 1 John chapter 5, verse 11 and verse 12? It says that, and this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. What do we do with these statements if we're not as strongly anchored in our understanding of the gospel? The story of Jonah is closer home than many of us think. You know, we, we, we all have a list of names on our little pieces of paper. And these are people who are far away from God in one way or the other. For the sake of this conversation, I want us to refer to the people on your list, the people who are on my list. I have it right here. I want us to refer to them as the Ninevites for the purpose of this conversation. I'm holding a paper with my names right here. I want you to imagine that I have your piece of paper as well. How are you responding to God's invitation to you to, to, to know him and to make him known? That's the purpose that God wants you to live out. I want you to think of, the, of yourself and that assignment and, and sort of look at it in the context of the fate that is awaiting the Ninevites in your life. The fate that was ahead of the Ninevites in the story of Jonah is that in 40 days they would have been destroyed. And the reality is that when we think about the people in our lives who are far from God and God's intention for us, God's instruction for us is that we will play our part in bringing them back to God. What will be the outcome of their lives if we do not play our part? This is the reality, guys, that whether it takes 40 days or longer, the sad reality is that the Bible says that their fate will be the same as that of the Ninevites, as that the, that the city of Nineveh was facing. Now, I know that this will be hard for some of you to watch, but I want you to imagine that I have your papers as well. I invited our, 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 our uh, you know, crew who are serving as we, as we do this recording here to write their names as well. And I have a list from Chris, who's one of our videographers. I have a list from Jaziel and from Nick, who plays the bass, and from Lucas, who plays the keyboard. I have a list from Mark, and, 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 and I've put all the lists right here. Now, for some of you, this will be difficult to watch, but I need you to understand that this is the reality that we are facing. This is what the scripture tells us will happen to those who are far from God and remain far from God. This will be the outcome if we do not do the thing that God has invited us to. This is what will happen to the Ninevites. 
in our lives. It might be difficult to observe. I've written the names of people on my list, people that I love and I care about deeply. And this is what the scripture tells us will happen if we fail to reach out to them, if we fail to live out our assignment to know God and to make him known. This is where the Ninevites were headed. And initially, Jonah rejected God's message to go and reach to them. And this is where the Ninevites, those who are far from God in our own lives, those who do not go to church, they have not received the gospel message, this is what awaits them, death and destruction. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. What will you do about the Ninevites in your life? Will you respond like Jonah at the beginning of the book of Jonah? Or will you be faithful in your, in your assignment and your purpose to know God and to make him known? You know, when we talk about the eternal destiny, uh, uh, you know, of those who do not connect with God, when we talk about hell and eternal damnation, it sounds so harsh. I'll be honest with you guys, even for me as I read the Bible, I'm tempted to overlook that conversation, that conversation of an eternity spent in hell. I'm tempted to overlook it as, as a path that's outdated at best or even as judgmental or, in, or intolerant. I'm tempted to say, you know, maybe there was an interpretation error or, an, or a misunderstanding with what God was saying. But you know, a great scholar once said, if you believe what you like in the gospel and reject what you don't like, it is not the gospel you believe, but yourself. If you pick and choose what you're believing in the gospel, then it's not the gospel that you believe, it's yourself that you believe in. But here's the good news, guys. God has called us to become agents of life to all those around us. God has called us to reach out to our family members. God has called us to reach out to our neighbors, to our colleagues at work, and there is hope for them, but only if we do our part, only if we respond like Jonah, not the first time where he refused to reach out and ran away, but this second time where, where it says the word of the Lord came a second time to Jonah and he stepped out and he went to Nineveh. Jonah chapter three, verse 10 continues. It says, when God saw what they did and how they turned from their evil ways, he had compassion and did not bring upon them the destruction he had threatened. When Jonah preached in obedience a simple, ineloquent message, the people that he was preaching to humble themselves before God, they asked for his mercy. And the amazing thing, guys, is that the result of that uh, faithfulness and obedience in Jonah is that God changed his mind. God changed his mind, guys. Can God change his mind? Clearly he can. He had made up his mind. He had made a determination. 40 days and Nineveh will be destroyed. 40 days and Nineveh will be destroyed. But because of how they responded to Jonah's message, because one person chose to be obedient, a whole city was saved from destruction. 120,000 human lives 120,000 men, women, and children were rescued and redeemed. They owed their lives to the obedience of this one man. Many lives were impacted for eternity. Will you be faithful? Will you obey? Many lives were transformed just because one man did his part. He preached a simple message, and then he let God do his part. And my invitation to you this, uh, as, we, as, we, as we look at the life of Jonah is this, do your part and let God do, do his. So what is your part? It has to do with your purpose, which as we've learned is to know God and to make him known. Mavuno, this is our responsibility. This is our part to play. Some of you are gifted in sharing about God's word. You sit next to a stranger on the bus and you turn every conversation around. It could be a conversation about a Beyonce or, 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 or something completely random, but you figure out a way to turn it around so that it becomes a conversation about Jesus. Some of you are so bold and so passionate and so gifted in evangelism that you can easily preach on the streets. But for most of us, this is not our gift. 
And that's why at Mavuno we teach two main ways that you can introduce Jesus to those around you. There are two simple uh, lessons that we've come across and they have been so effective. The first way is this, be a prayer provider. Let me say that again, be a prayer provider. One of the greatest gifts that you can give to those around you is prayer. When you see someone you know going through a difficult time and you offer to pray with them through it. When God answers the prayers that you've been raising together, it becomes a wonderful opportunity uh, uh, you know, for you to, to introduce that person to a relationship with God. And this isn't just a theoretical lesson, it's a lesson that I've experienced and it's a tool that I've used in my own life. You know, I remember that last year in the month of August, you know, we had a gathering uh, at Mavuno Hill City. And on one of the days, we just said, you know, you know what, we'll step out, we'll go out in pairs, and we'll go and evangelize at, at you know, this uh, um, development, housing development that's right next door to Mavuno Hill City. And I'll never forget the story of one of the, you know, we went in pairs and in trios, and I'll never forget the story of one of the guys, one of the teams when they came back. They said that they walked up, and the first person they talked to, they said to them, hi, how can we pray for you? It's an excellent conversation starter because very few people we reject an opportunity to be prayed for because we all have things we are hoping for. We are all struggling in some way or the other. And so many times people are desperate for prayer. And so when you walk up to someone and you say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm walking around, I'm praying over my neighborhood. How can I pray for you? Most of the time, the response will be yes. And some people will, will tell you specific issues to pray for, but some people will not. They'll be a little bit shy, and they'll just say, just, just say a general prayer for me. And for this team, they walked into uh, this housing estate, and, and the first person they met, they said to them, how can we pray for you? And listen, guys, this was their response. This person said, I've been looking for someone who could pray for me to get saved. I have been waiting, uh, desiring, maybe even praying for someone who would pray for me to become a follower of Jesus. The only thing that was standing in the way of these persons getting saved is not that God hadn't prepared their heart, it's not that they were not willing and did not desire to live a life that honored God. The only thing that stood in the way of their becoming a believer is that we had yet to step into that estate and say, how can we pray for you? We could have picked all kinds of reasons as to why we couldn't go and do evangelism that day. But how happy am I that we stepped out, that we were challenged, that it was uncomfortable when Pastor M gave us the instruction to go and that we said yes. Because on that day we led a, a tens of people to the Lord, to the glory of his name, because God had already prepared their hearts and got them to be ready. A couple of weeks back, I walked into the same housing estate uh, with, with one of our pastors here at Mavuno Hill City. And, 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 you know, and we walked to a business establishment and there were these, I think there were four or five young men busy at work. And we asked them if they could take a brief break and they did. And we simply told them, we'd like to pray for you. And we introduced ourselves and we said, how can we pray for you and you and you? And, 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 you know, and they said what they needed prayer for. And we prayed for them. And at the end of the prayer, we said to them, listen, we've prayed that God will bless you and we believe that he will. But the greatest blessing God can give you is the blessing of being in relationship with him. Would you like to commit your lives to the Lord. And all five of those young men, the four of them gave their lives to Christ. One rededicated his life and said he wants to commit, to recommit his life to serving the Lord. All it took was for us to walk into that place of business and say, how can we pray for you? God had already been preparing their hearts. All he's looking for is people who will do their part and he will do his. Do your part and let God do his. The first way we do evangelism and the first way that we are learning and we're training people to do evangelism is by being prayer providers. Will you be a prayer provider? Will you offer to pray for your friends, for your family, for your colleagues at the office as you pray for them and trust God to move as they come to you and say, oh my goodness, God did it. Things are changing in my marriage. My parent has been healed. My child is doing well at school. You, you, you know, you can tell them, I told you that God is good. Do you want to be in relationship with him? Will you be a prayer provider? Will you do your part so that you can allow God to do his. The second thing that we have learned to do 
is, is, or, or to train people uh, uh, in this process is to be an inviter, is to be an inviter. You know, many of us have been coming to Mavuno for a long time, and in the process, we've experienced significant blessing and life change. Every day we hear testimonies. We hear testimonies of marriages change. We hear testimonies of children are turning into leaders. We hear of prayers that have been miraculously answered and many, many ways in which God has blessed us within the Mavuno family. Why not commit to be a person who invites others to come, to come and experience God in the same way? Why not commit to invite others to come and be a partaker of the things that God is doing in our midst? For example, on the last Sunday uh, of, of this month, the month of July, on July 31st, we'll be praying for families and, and, and just speaking a blessing and asking God to move in the lives of our families and our family members. Would you take this opportunity to invite your family members to church? Would you take this opportunity to say to your neighbor, hey, my pastor will be praying. My pastor will be praying for families and I'll be there with my family and I'll be giving that blessing. Do you want to come along with your family? It's going to be a great time to trust God for some breakthroughs. For those of you who watch uh, the service online, uh, you know, would you be willing to invite some nephews and nieces, to invite some neighbors to watch the service with you at home on Sunday? Would you be willing to make a simple breakfast and then just watch the service together and discuss it over a meal afterwards? Would you be willing to go that step? Would you be willing to go through the discomfort of, of, of overcoming your shyness or your social anxiety or whatever barrier has stood in the way? Would you step out and knock on that door of your neighbor who you barely know and say to them, hey, listen, I go to Mavuno Church and on Sunday, next Sunday, 31st, we'll be praying, uh, uh, you know, we'll be receiving prayers for our families and I'd love for you to come along and to bring your family. Would you be willing to invite them into your home if you're part of the online community and just invite them and say, hey, our pastor will be praying over us. Would you be willing to come so that we can receive those prayers? As I'm receiving them for my family, you can receive them for your family as well. You know, statistics show that 95% of people visiting Mavuno come because a friend invited them. 95%, that's amazing. 95% of people, they didn't sort of fumble into the, into, into Amavuno church near them. They didn't sort of stumble into it. That God brought, uh, they, they found themselves in the church because someone allowed themselves to be used by God to invite them into church. But research also shows that most people need to be invited around seven times before they finally decide to give church a try. We sometimes give up after the first try. But think about it. Your job is not to save that person. That's God's job. All God is looking for is for you to do your part and he will do his. Your job is to keep sharing God's love. Your job is to keep inviting them to a space where they can hear about it. My question to you is, will you do your part and let God do his? If you're in a discipleship group or a challenge to you and Pastor M has shared this with us over and over, would you commit as a group to lead at least one person to Christ every week? That means that everyone has to do their part, praying for people, inviting them to the discipleship group because for some of them it will be much harder to bring them to church and that every week we will trust God for at least one salvation story through our group. Each week, take a few minutes to pray for friends and family who are not believers yet. This is the spiritual work that God is inviting us to engage in. God is able to take what may appear to you a simple effort and to make it significantly effective like he did for Jonah. With a simple message, 40 days and Nineveh will be overthrown. God, God brought repentance and, and turned around the destiny of the city of Nineveh. Will you do your part? and let God do his. Because of Jonah's obedience, a whole city was saved. Listen, Mavuno, it's time to stop living for things that we can do by our own strength. God is calling us to restore people back to him. God is calling us, he desires to use us for restoration of society, transformation of our nations. And he's calling us and he desires to do these things, but he desires us to play our part. He desires to do it through you and through me. And the question before us today is, will you do your part and let God do his? 
It's time for us to go out into our homes, our offices, our counties, our nations, every sphere of society, and to play our part to do what God is calling us to, to be prayer providers, to be inviters, to welcome people into spaces where God can intervene in their lives. And the question today before us is simple. Will you do your part and let God do his? I want to close with a word of prayer. Maybe you're here and you'd never quite uh, uh, you know, understood the gift of salvation and God's gift of grace. And I wanna pray for you. Listen, Nineveh was a violent, sinful city. That's why God was going to destroy it. But the moment they confessed and turned away and changed their ways, God restored, healed. He changed his mind and he, and he stopped his plan of destruction. He has the same invitation for you today. If you're willing to commit your life to the Lord, I want to pray for you. And I'm going to ask that you just repeat this prayer after me as you come into the blessing of being a son of God. Dear Jesus, I thank you for your love. I confess that I have sinned. I commit today to turn away from my sinful life. I commit today to enter into a life of obedience to your will. I thank you for the grace and mercy that I have experienced in my life. And from today, I thank you for the blessing of salvation. Our Lord and our King, we thank you for our brothers and sisters who have made this decision to honor you. We com as they have committed their lives to you, we pray that Holy Spirit of God, you will descend upon them, that you will lead and guide them and direct them in a path in their lives that will bring glory and honor to your name. I want to leave us with an assignment, Mavuno, as we bring this time to a close that you will commit to pray for the five people on your list, that you will commit to invite them to attend your discipleship group, and that you will commit to bring them, to invite them and bring them if you need to, uh, to, to church next Sunday as we get into our family service where we'll be uh, you know, just saying prayers and speaking blessing over our families. Let's allow ourselves to be available for the thing that God is doing. My invitation to you is will you do your part that you can let God do his. God bless you, Mavuno, and have a wonderful week.